Hey Rayleigh and anybody else watching and welcome back to another message from your father. So trying something a little bit different today, recording with the door open because I feel like you're going to be pounding on it if I close it. So we'll see how that goes. Anyway, we have been looking at Psalm. We went up to 80 yesterday. So today, chapter 81 through 87. If you remember, the big theme yesterday was remembrance. To God's people, remember what God has done. And to God, please remember your people. So today we are going to be looking specifically at a call for obedience to God's people. So if God has done all this stuff in the past, and if we remember it, then remember to be obedient because we know that God can deliver. Uh, and then also a call to action. Uh, so calling God to action. And then a psalm of that remembrance saying, hey, we do remember. So again, all of this in 81 through 87. So Psalm 81. <clears throat> <clears throat> Excuse me. Sing for joy to God our strength. Shout aloud to the God of Jacob. Begin the music. Strike the tambourine. Play the melodious harp and lyre. Sound the ram's horn at the new moon. And when the moon is full on the day of our feast, this is a decree for Israel, an ordinance of God of Jacob. He established it as a statute for Joseph when he went out against Egypt, where we heard a language we did not understand. He says, I removed the burden from their shoulders. Their hands were set free from the basket. In your distress, you called, and I rescued you. I answered you out of a thundercloud. I tested you with the waters of Meribah. Hear, O my people, and I will warn you. If you would but listen to me, O Israel, you shall have no foreign god among you. You shall not bow down to an alien god. I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of Egypt. Open wide your mouth, and I will fill it. But my people would not listen to me. Israel would not submit to me. So I gave over, I gave them over to their stubborn hearts to follow their own devices. If my people would but listen to me, if Israel would follow my ways, how quickly I would subdue their enemies and turn my hand against their foes. Those who hate the Lord would cringe before him, but their punishment would last forever. But you would be fed with the finest of wheat. With honey from the rock, I would satisfy you. Psalm 82. God presides in the great assembly. He gives judgment among the gods. How long will you defend the unjust and show partiality to the wicked? Defend the cause of the weak and fatherless. Maintain the rights of the poor and the oppressed. Rescue the weak and needy. Deliver them from the hand of the wicked. They know nothing. They understand nothing. They walk about in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are shaken. You said you are gods, but are all sons of the Most High. But you will die like mere men. You will fall like every other ruler. Rise up, O God, judge the earth, for all the nations are your inheritance. Psalm 83. O God, do not keep silent. Be not quiet, O God. Be not still. See how your enemies are astir, how your foes rear their heads. With cunning they conspire against your people. They plot against those you cherish. Come, they say, let us destroy them as a nation, that the name of Israel be remembered no more. With one mind they plot together. They form an alliance against you. The tents of Edom and the Ishmaelites of Moab and the Hagarites, Gabal, Ammon, Amalek, Philistia with the people of Tyre. Even Assyria has joined them to lend strength to descendants of Lot. <clears throat> Excuse me. Do to them as you did to Midian, as you did to Sisera and Jabin at the river Kishon, who perished at Endor and became like refuse on the ground. Make their nobles like Oreb and Zeb, all their princes like Zeba and Zalmunna, who said, Let us take possession of the pasture lands of God. Make them like tumbleweed, O my God, like chaff before the wind. As fire consumes the forest or a flame sets the mountains ablaze, so pursue them with your tempest and terrify them with your storm. Cover their faces with shame so that men will seek your name, O Lord. May they ever be ashamed and dismayed. May they perish in disgrace. Let them know that you, whose name is the Lord, that you alone are the most high over all the earth. Psalm 84. How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord Almighty. My soul yearns, even faints for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. Even the sparrow has found a home, and the swallow a nest for herself, where she may have her young, a place near your altar. O Lord Almighty, my King and my God. Blessed are those who dwell in your house. They are ever praising you. Blessed are those whose strength is in you, who have set their hearts on pilgrimage. As they pass through the valley of Baca, they make it a place of springs. The autumn rains cover it with pools. They go from strength to strength till each appears before God in Zion. 
Hear my prayer, O Lord God Almighty. Listen to me, O God of Jacob. Look upon our shield, O God. Look with favor on your anointed one. Better is one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of the wicked. For the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord bestows favor and honor. No good thing he does is withheld from those whose walk is blameless. O Lord Almighty, blessed is the man who trusts in you. Psalm 85. <clears throat> you showed favor to your land, O Lord. You restored the fortunes of Jacob. You forgive the iniquity of your people and covered all their sins. You set aside your wrath and turned from your fierce anger. Restore us again, O God, our Savior, and put away your displeasure toward us. Will you be angry with us forever? Will you prolong your anger through all generations? Will you not revive us again, that your people may rejoice in you? Show us your unfailing love, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. I will listen to what God, the Lord, will say. He promises peace to his people, his saints, but let them not return to folly. Surely his salvation is near those who fear him, that his glory may dwell in our land. Love and faithfulness meet together. Righteousness and peace kiss each other. Faithfulness springs forth from the earth, and righteousness looks down from heaven. The Lord will indeed give what is good, and our land will yield its harvest. Righteousness goes before him and prepares the way for his steps. Psalm 86. Hear, O Lord, and answer me, for I am poor and needy. Guard my life, for I am devoted to you. You are my God. Save your servant who trusts in you. Have mercy on me, O Lord, for I call to you all day long. Bring joy to your servant, for to you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. You are forgiving and good, O Lord, abounding in love to all who call on you. Hear my prayer, O Lord. Listen to my cry for mercy. In the day of my trouble, I will call to you, for you will answer me. Among the gods, there is none like you, O Lord. No deeds can compare with yours. All the nations you have made will come and worship before you, O Lord. They will bring glory to your name. For you are great and do marvelous deeds. You alone are God. Teach me your way, O Lord, and I will walk in your truth. Give me an undivided heart that I may fear your name. I will praise you, O Lord, my God, with all my heart. I will glorify your name forever, for great is your love toward me. You have delivered me from the depths of the grave. The arrogant are attacking me, O God. A band of ruthless men seeks my life, men without regard for you. But you, O Lord, are compassionate and gracious God, slow to anger, abounding in love and truth and faithfulness. Turn to me and have mercy on me. Grant your strength to your servant and save the son of your maidservant. Give me a sign of your goodness that my enemies may see it and be put to shame. For you, O Lord, have helped me and have comforted me. Psalm 87. He has set his foundation on the holy mountain. The Lord loves the gates of Zion more than all the dwellings of Jacob. Glorious things are said of you, O city of God. I will record Rahab and Babylon among those who acknowledge me, Philistia too, and Tyre along with Cush. And they will say, this, this one was born in Zion. Indeed, of Zion it will be said, this one and that one were born in her, and the Most High himself will establish her. The Lord will write in the register of the peoples, this one was born in Zion. As they make music, they will sing, all my foundations are in you. So... I think a lot of these chapters seem to beg a question that I, I think is important that is addressed. Because this question and this phrase is thrown out in popular Christianity is, God will never give you more than you can handle. And there's a verse that seems to speak to that really well. Now, this is Paul's second letter to the Corinthians. And it is Corinthians, 2 Corinthians 1, 8, and 9. And this is Paul talking about comfort. So chapter 1, 8, and 9. We do not want you to be uninformed, brothers, about the hardships we suffered in the province of Asia. We were under great pressure, far beyond our ability to endure, so that we despaired even of life. Indeed, in our hearts we felt the sentence of death. But this happened, that we might not rely on ourselves, but on God, who raises the dead. So when you hear that, does God give you more than you can handle? Yes. When, when you've heard that phrase, does God never gives us more than we can handle. I think there's exposition that's needed there. We need to add more to that. And my prayer for you, Rayleigh, is that you remember this. God does allow you to experience more than you can handle. Specifically, like Paul says here, this has happened that we rely not on ourselves, but on God who raises the dead. He breaks the laws of life and nature because he is God and he can do all that. 
So hardships, you're going to face them, absolutely. And will they be more than you can handle? Very, very likely. Because it's then that we rely on God. So the promise that you have is not in the fact that you have an easy life. But the promise is the fact that you can rely on God who breaks the very laws of nature to help you overcome. And that might not be exactly like you think. I don't remember if I've mentioned this before, but I had hated that phrase, uh, if if it's not good, it's not the end. And I've I've disliked that phrase for a long time because I've always thought, man, you know, we have all these martyrs in the Old Testament and in, or excuse me, well, some in the Old Testament, absolutely, but in the New Testament of the disciples. And I think, again, that's so, so important to remember that that death is not the end. And the one we worship is the one who can break death. But we may not experience that on this side of life. So we always look forward and we always trust God when it is, when, not if, when it is too much that we can't handle on ourselves. Anyway, know that I love you. And that's my prayer for you is that you remember that. Remember what God has done. For anyone else watching as well, know that I love and appreciate you. And I'll plan on seeing you tomorrow. Have a good one.